This is for all you Uniscatch fans out there. Your time has come. Reactor 2.0 finally mimics the workflow you know from Uniscatch. Of course, it's slightly different, but in this video, I'll show you how they are interrelated. So we'll be working with an Airfly Pro inside of Reactor 2.0 and we'll make a custom configuration. So we intend to build something up from scratch and I'll show you how that relates to how it's done in Unisketch. So um, yeah, it's just video. We first create this configuration. You can name it any way you want. It doesn't have like huge consequences as such, but um, I will be able to use this to demonstrate um, Airfly Pro. This is how Airfly Pro, Pro looks. And if we go to coreskahoy.com, which undoubtedly you know, we can find the ATEM switching configuration, which is one of the more popular ones. And if we go there to advanced, you see something you have seen before, right? Basically, this is the um, Airfly Pro. And we uh, have multiple states in this one, so eight states. And then if we enable open all configuration, you'll basically see how every one of these keys is configured. If I click on this one, you go down here, you can see in state ME1, we are essentially having a uh, black magic item. I think this might be preview select. Okay, for ME row number one, input number one. And if we go on to the next one, it would be input number two. Otherwise it would be the same and a shift level, if it was a shift level, then it's input number 11 and so on. So much of this with these toggles and drop downs and so on, you'll now also find inside Reactor. The different states here, there would be navigation keys for that. These are basically the keys and they would change between the states. And if there's not anything defined in a state, it will fall back to the first one. And all that is in Reactor 2.0. If we scroll through this page, you'll see that many of the hardware components on the panel, these buttons, they have all been populated with content for each of the states. All right, but we'll also find that there are some buttons, for instance, the navigation keys. This is the navigation key that basically changes or selects one state and another one and another and so on. They are only defined on the first layer, the ME number one layer. And another thing, another example would be the cut button. If we go to the cut button, you see that this is only defined on ME one and ME two, all right? So that's just like giving you a, a little idea about the basics here. So if we go back here, I would start by creating a number of pages. And uh, we keep them transparent pages because that means that whatever we put on, where we do not put anything on them, they will fall back to what is on the background. And that is exactly what Unisketch does. So we'll call this ME2. Let's just create that one. And I think this one we could rename to ME1 to be absolutely faithful to the Unisketch configuration. All right. So we have AUX Media Kia. Let's do that. It's just AUX. Whoa. Great media Kia, and then I guess we have uh, macro audio DVE user. Okay, macro audio. I think I'm just gonna stop here. See, actually, the user page was designed already. Yeah. You know, the point is coming through to you pretty clearly. We can keep going like that. And all right, instead of me talking, let's just do it. All right, so it would just completely create the nine states we have on a Airfly Pro. Awesome, okay, great. We also have shift level, this is kind of built in. So it's already here and we don't need to worry about it. All right, so on this one, now we'll start configuring. I'll basically, drag across these from left to right. And over here on the side, I would now be able to select my ATEM actions if I had an ATEM switcher enabled or added. And I don't, unless I will just search on the network for my faithful ATEM mini, which of course is far too small for this controller, but still there it is. And it is found on the network, connected, and now we can go back here. Because the cool thing about this is, and let me just check, I'm on the first layer, normal, so that's essentially my background. And I have my ATEM switcher here, I can make preview selects, I can choose my ME row, lock that down to ME number one, and then I can choose the first input here. Now, if I choose batch edit, that gives me a chance for these 12 keys to basically auto increase the numbers. That's so awesome, so cool. So we'll just do that. 
And I will now do the same for this row up here. So that's program select, right? ME row number one. There we go. Input number one. Let's use the batch editor place cursor here. One, two, three, four, five, up to 12. Done. All right. So you see that we have something that seems to pretty much work as you would expect for an ATEM switcher. Nice. And we need shift levels, do we? Yes, we do. So if I go to the shifted state, because there's nothing on the shifted state, you won't see any override here, but this is what we'll be creating now. So essentially, we would then drag across these. We would say, this is preview select. And we, again, will pick ME row number one. We'll pick, of course, some other input. Now in our case, I'm just picking input number one because it makes it easy for me to go here and say 13 and then just run through these inputs. And then of course, there would be something down here with the last keys, like this one, probably instead of 24, we'll pick um, media player number one or something. I think that that's actually what it's how it's done on, on, on the real one. Now notice that as I go between these two states, it is actually reacting to this, the upper row is the same, but the lower row is changing because and these seems to be like off. And they are off because they um, are not found on the actual switcher that I am uh, setting this up for. We do the same for this um, level. Let's just do that on the shifted level. We are still on the background. Let's go program select, pick ME number one and pick input number one. Go to the batch editor, type in 13 here, just plus one all the way through. And on the last button, let's do the same as what we did here. We had um, 10, 10 or 30, 10. Maybe I can just do it like that. And you will see media player is now put into this one for the program select. Okay, so that's really nice. And um, if you look at what we have over here on the uh, this one, if you uh, go to this button, for instance, um, we have then the same for auxiliary select. So if we wanted to, let me see, uh, do that for yeah for me2 we can basically you know do the same of course for me2 but otherwise we could go to auxiliary and then i think it's auxiliary number one and number two on these different rows but uh let's just do we, we do it up here just for the example so um again actually right now we should you see the transparency the the consequence of transparency of the layers that as long as we have not put any behaviors in here it will shine through what was on the me1 page I sometimes call them layers because this is another word we're using internally. Um, pages is the official word used in this context, but underneath we are driven, driving this with what is known as layers inside the tree. And um, if you click this button, open tree, you see this whole layer structure is uh, actually underneath the whole thing. Um, you can see all the stuff that we have put onto the um, the layer for um, the, the first here is these behaviors. But this is actually what we are shielding away from you with this new page space paradigm. But under the hood, we are actually using layers to manage it. Now, let's get back to what I promised you. I want to show you how we can add um, select auxiliaries. So we'll just pick auxiliary channel number one, uh, input number one, batch edit, and I'll go through with a plus one action on these. Wow like that and then i could go to the shifted state and do the same so you see of course there's a lot of repetition in doing it in this way that's what you get when you want to manually configure everything but it's no different from unisketch and when you get used to it this is a really quick operation i think you're already impressed by now that you can really see the potential of what we have done so this is really cool and nice i can change my auxiliaries on the atom switch in simulation mode all right so the cut button, if I want a cut button, I wouldn't put that cut button on the auxiliary layer. I would put it down here on the background because I want that cut button to be available, shine through all the layers. So if we now scroll down, we can put in cut and uh, it's almost as easy as a one click thing. I still need to select my ME row. Thank you. And then I can do the same for auto. Let's just quickly add the auto action. Yes. All right. Let's see if we can assign the T bar to something useful. See about the dump. Um, atom transition, classic transition A to B. We need this to be on the ME. Okay. So what happens if we simulate? Cut, cut, auto. All right. And let's use the T bar to go between these. Yes. 
So that's cool. And if I go to the auxiliary layer, you see this is changing up here, but my cut button is still working under the hood, right? Even though I'm on the auxiliary layer because it is not being overridden. Now, what about navigation? I mean, because you can keep on like this, put stuff into media, Kia, macro, and so on. But the navigation that we have on the original Airfly Pro and Unisketch was basically these keys, all right? So we can easily do that. Simply click here, and um, maybe we can also do some sort of batch processing of this. Let's just try it out. We had the first eight keys are being used for this purpose. So this is not from the atom switcher. Now what we want to do is to go to page. Okay, so I'll just pick go to page for these. And now we see it can actually get us right to those pages, but I need to pick a value. So I'll just pick this value. And of course, this is now a button that takes us to ME number one immediately click boom. And oh, no, I created them on this one. That was wrong. Okay, I got to remove that. You see what happened? Yeah, so this is what you need to think about when you have transparent layers. It's not necessarily so obvious. You need to be aware about which page are you on because it's not blocking out stuff. And um, um, but uh, yeah, it's worth it. It's, it's definitely worth it. But you can see that for all these layers, I put eight navigation keys on ME2. Sorry, layers, pages. I'll just delete those behaviors. All right, so just delete them and go back to this one. Okay, now let's my <clears throat> let's just pick this. And then we go to choose a go to page, we pick a page, we use the batch editor. And uh, let me see, it could be the value. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have super nice drop. Ah, actually still I think. Yeah, <laughs> come on. That's that <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, mm, hopefully, ah, okay, so it keeps the label. Yeah, um, but does it work? It does work. Now, the thing is that the label here is something that we kind of help you by putting in. I mean, you can put in anything and this is what is getting shown in there. So that's maybe not so helpful, but uh, let's let's just go over to the background page and then we'll just choose Emmy number one. Actually, Emmy number two is not picked here. It is actually passing by that one. It's taking auxiliary on the original one. You see auxiliary, then media, Kia, macro, and so forth. Now, uh, on, so on this one, we'll just take media. And in that sense, it's it makes more sense to just go in here and then pick these because then you get the label with you. And of course, you can easily change the label. It's just this field and you can change that to whatever you want it to say. And then it's a done deal. Okay. And then finally, the user page. So awesome. Okay, guys, um, that, that was a comparison to how Unisketch is working. So you should basically be able to have the same kind of workflow that you're used to here, where you have different states, you have shift levels as well. But inside of Reactor, it is managed by having these pages you can go through and you can go between the shift levels here and you can configure multiple actions by dragging across them, assigning behaviors from easy one click assignable behaviors over here. You can even do multi actions, which is something I have covered in other videos. But if you want to have multiple actions inside these steps, which sometimes happens over here, but you don't need it in the same degree. Let me see. Most of these are like shift levels that we are adding. But sometimes once in a while, there might be like two. Yeah, like this one, for instance, you see uh, ATEM something and a local color. Now, you don't need an action to set local color, for instance. So let's just go to that example, which would be this media player. So the color is something that we picked out because it's so typical that we thought, OK, let's just instead give it to people as a field. You can set like that. So that's one of the things you don't need to worry about. And um, so colors are managed, but sometimes you have more uh, tricky things where you want to have multiple actions. This looks a little bit like one of them. But the point is that we have something called add behavior where you can basically add multiple behaviors to the same button press and um, then have the key do multiple things. So also you can explore that, but I hope this inspired you and got you a lot of great energy for diving into Reactor 2.0 to substitute your Unisketch installations.